Hey, good evening, folks. Uh, just a little review on a video I did earlier to display or, you know, portray how you would install Prism Launcher from source code using a distro that's capable of maintaining that in the app. And this is, of course, Gen2 Linux. And uh, you most probably definitely noticed that I'm not running a Linux system on my, my desktop PC at the moment, but I am remotely connected to one. And they do do that fairly frequently, get the utility out of that, but you know, that's really not the, uh, the subject of concern. But uh, what, would, what would you do if you had to install a software package from source code? Pretend verbose. You know, you'd probably think, well, I've got to download the install files and, you know, maybe I'll get um, a targz file. Might, might be tempted to go to their website and, and look around here and you know you'd think well Windows of course I'm on Windows right now on my desktop PC uh, or Mac OS or Linux well, there's lots of um, download and install directions for various Linux distributions Gen 2 is the one we're currently looking at or um, you know Prism Launcher's uh, GitHub repo I think there's a link here and they have even even on here uh, lots of fixes but wow so they've got all of these different different versions and somebody might say I need this uh, that's the first one I should pick well perhaps not um, what you might instead want to try and use is a portable version and the portable one will come, I, I would imagine, with all of the software dependencies included required to run the program itself because software programs have software dependencies. And if those software dependencies are missing, your software program will not work. So directly trying to install a program without the dependencies using a manual method, for example, might result in, you know, just doesn't work. It, it won't work, period. So. This is a view that you would see where there, there's optional features that you can enable because, you know, QT6 is coming out, but it's not quite yet usable uh, with a system that has QT5 packages already pre-built and, and, you know, being used. So, like KDE uh, Plasma version 6 is, you know, still very, very early. It's not even due to be out until next year. And uh, it's currently November 2023. So, you know, but I want to build it from source code, you say. Well, okay, very well then. This is kind of what it would look like. Uh, except that you would have to do all of this manually. You would have to, of course, install, you know, SCDoc, Quazip, GORAC file system, whatever the heck that is, you know, to be able to satisfy the requirements for Prism Launcher. Now, it's uh, beneficial to mention too that, you know, this. Um, system already has you know a fairly complete feature set of 2060 packages which is fairly considerable for a Gen2 system but it is a fairly considerable Gen2 system that uh, you know sees frequent use so but we're going to install Prism Launcher and uh, we'll just see how that works so you do calculation dependency checks and so on and uh, I had to do some previous setup to, you know, show how this works. So that this installation procedure would just, you know, do this, right? Some preparations were needed, you know. So there's, of course, doing this manually, a lot more interactive tasks required, like ordering CMake yourself. That that's in itself is very technically challenging to understand. <laughs> and finally, we're building Prism Launcher. And this is what building Prism Launcher looks like when you're building it from source code. In this case, using, of course, CMake, GCC, compiler, and all of the software build utilities, and uh, also Java 17. To 
you know, you can see where it's, while it's building, it's including support for like Quazip and, uh, you know, like QT user interface things. I means include. So each one of these is a command. You can see on this, this left cons left, um, left column kind of, there's 272 of 493, 282, 3, 4, 6, you know, and uh, that's that's all of the commands that's required to build this um, code project into a functional pro um, a functional program, a functional user interface application. Like for some reason here, it's even even including support for for mumble, mumble. Uh, user interface servers or something like murmur for some reason i'm not uh, immediately aware of but i did have a mumble um voice chat server on my uh machine that this is currently building on at some time so we're getting close to finished it's at 410 or 493 so you can see build progress doing this most of the time by by you know paying attention to what's happening or through some other means or tools that are available and and this is building this code uh, in system ram and then it will copy that uh, out of a temporary directory to disk and install it so this would be like all of the install directories right um, that are temporary that are then copied to all of these individual directories right it, it, it's all split up by by purpose and you know whether it's an icon uh, whatever it's documentation, you know, the watcher shortcut, <laughs> right? So, yeah, so you can see, you get the idea. And then of course, user, user being prison launcher is the, the application binary itself. So you can see here, if we do this, we do LDD and this lists the um, dependency libraries required to run the program, right? So it requires all of this stuff. And if you're missing even one of these, it will fail to function. That's just the way that it works. If uh, your application uses uh, loadable shared libraries, like Windows has DLL files, yeah. But, you know, of course I can't run Prism Launcher here at the moment. But, uh, you know, I can show you how kind of how it's built and how it works. And that's kind of how it works. So, cheers.